Starting off at the bottom of our list this year is Angry Dogs. Now, I had it higher last year, but honestly, when I got to thinking about it, it just sells hot dogs, which you can get better hot dogs at award winners. And it does sell the Hot Link hot dog, which I really do enjoy. Uh, but again, Corn Dog Castle also sells a Hot Link hot dog. And I feel like it does it better because it's a corn dog. The only reason this cart is here, well, I really don't know why it's here, other than the fact that it's been extremely hard for me to film this without getting into people's way. So there's just so many people walking by. Maybe it's just a, a high traffic area. They figure it's the best part to put it. But it just feels redundant to me because you could get what this serves better elsewhere in the park. And next up actually is award wieners. Why? Well, because a hot dog is a hot dog is a hot dog. I don't care how you dress it up. It's still a hot dog. And this isn't the ballpark. And truthfully, the ballpark actually serves way better hot dogs than award wieners. Also, as I mentioned in our food guide, steer clear of the funnel cake fries. Don't say I didn't warn you. I do want to mention a few disclaimers here for this video. Uh, the first one being that Food here at Disney California Adventure can actually fall into one of two categories. It's gonna be like mediocre, middle of the road food, and really good food. I don't think there's anything like absolutely terrible here at Disney California Adventure. Uh, and I do find a lot of the food to be interchangeable. So take these rankings with a grain of salt. Many of them can be interchanged. For the second disclaimer, well, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Coming in at number 15 is Smoke Jumper's Grill. Now, this is a very small upgrade from last year because they've added breakfast to their menu, and I found both burritos to be fairly decent. But it still just mostly sells burgers and the like, so it doesn't make it very high on my list. If you're gonna come to Disney, there are better things to buy than a burger. Last year, I ranked Poultry Palace last, and I admit that it was an unfair ranking. I'd never eaten here before, and by the appearance of the place, I just assumed this was some KFC variety knockoff. But instead, I found the chicken drumsticks to be surprisingly tasty, and so it gets a small bump up the ranks this year. However, try as I might, I couldn't justify a higher placement than number 14. Earning an honorable mention is the Studio Catering Company. Now, why do I say an honorable mention? Well, because I've never actually eaten here, and it is listed as a snack location on the Disneyland app. And one criteria that I set up for this video was that I was only going to include a quick service and table service meal locations that you might get like lunch or dinner at, not some place where you might get a snack. Now I know that they do serve things here that can be considered meals, which is why it's getting the mention. However, the only thing I've gotten here is an empanada. And I don't know, I just, I debated whether to put it in the video or not. By the same token, we have the Shawarma Palace here. And uh, the Shawarma Palace gets a large downgrade this year, not because of the food quality, uh, but because at the end of the day, the only two things that this place sells are shawarmas and falafels. And both are literally just some meat rolled <laughs> up in a pita. There are definitely better places at Disney California Adventure for you to grab a bite to eat, but this will do in a pinch if you just don't have time for a traditional meal. Holding its place at number 12 is the Cozy Cone Motel. Now, once again, I kind of debated putting this one on the list, but it was on the list last year, and that's because only one of these five cones actually sells anything resembling any sort of a meal. And it's actually a snack at snack prices, and it's the bread cones from the Chili Cone Queso. However, I have found that if you actually eat the bread cone, it is quite filling and can be a full meal. I have eaten it as a full meal before. So I felt like it deserved to be on the list because, well, I enjoy the cones here. At number 11, we have the Paradise Garden Grill. This gets a small bump from last year, primarily because I downgraded a few other options and nothing more. The food here is decent. This location, though, mostly only caters to festivals and is often closed like it is today when there are no festivals going on which is why I can't rank it any higher. If you are enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you find yourself agreeing or disagreeing with me, let me know down in the comments and tell me where you would put the restaurants. And rounding out the bottom of our top 10 is Corn Dog Castle. Now this place mostly just sells corn dogs. However, it does have the Hot Link Corn Dog as well as the Pepper Jack Cheese on a Stick, which I find to be a welcome upgrade from say like the Little Red Wagon over at Disneyland. 
Of course, you can find a corn dog at the grocery store, but that hot link or pepper jack cheese on a stick, not so much. Which means that I find that Corn Dog Castle does have a little bit of that Disney magic on their menu. Coming in at number nine is Flo's V8 Cafe. I have given it a few spots of a boost this year because uh, while it still gives off mostly burger joint vibes, they have added the Flo's fried chicken to the menu. Now, they used to have roast beef a long time ago, which I found to be a really great option. But that fried chicken is basically Plaza Inn chicken, but over here at Disney California Adventure, and that upgrades the menu. Additionally, I feel like seasonally, they have some really great food options. So uh, steer clear of the cheeseburger, but uh, definitely some of the items on the menu are worth your consideration. Dropping from number four to number eight might seem like a pretty harsh drop for Carthay Circle Restaurant, but allow me to explain. Last year, I ranked these restaurants mostly based on the idea of, well, if it's a sit-down table service restaurant and it's fancier, it therefore deserves to be higher on the list because it's gonna have better quality food, correct? When I actually ate here, I found the food not to be that much better than Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Now, I did just get the pasta dish, so maybe some of the other options on the menu are better, but for the pasta dish that I did have, like I said, I'd have rather gone to Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta and paid a quarter of the price. So, uh, this is just my experience, but I bumped it down this year for my video. Speaking of Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, I've placed this one at number seven. Now, like some others before it, this one received a bit of an upgrade solely because I downgraded several several others. However, you might be outraged that I would even dare to put this above Carthay Circle. And again, it just comes back down to this being a really affordable place to eat, the pasta actually being quite delicious. Now, of course, if we were ranking it solely based on the pizza part of it, it probably would be fighting for a spot down by award wieners or angry dogs. However, I have found that seasonally, they do sometimes have some specialty pizzas here that can actually be quite good. The best part of Boardwalk and Pizza and Pasta though is that my kids can often split this meal, which makes it an affordable, family-friendly location. We now enter San Francisco Square and what I'd consider to be the really good food category that we mentioned earlier. The next three restaurants received a bit of a shuffle in my personal opinion, but I believe they're all interchangeable and you could really rank them however you like. So starting off at number six is Cucina Cucamonga. And I'll admit that the only thing I've eaten here is the quesadilla, and it is really good. It's never steered me wrong, but when the other two restaurants experienced wide menu changes with the new theme, Cucina Cucamonga remained mostly untouched. As such, it's getting placed at the bottom of these three. I do plan to try a few more items on their menu though throughout this next year. At number five, we have Aunt Cass Cafe, which still has the classic sourdough bread bowls on their menu, plus a few new twists with the re-theme here to the area. But being completely transparent, I haven't actually eaten here since it's changed to San Francisco Square. However, Amy has, and of course, you can't really ever go wrong with the classic soup in his sourdough bread bowl. I, I, I love it every time I have it. Perhaps one of the biggest changes to San Francisco Square was Lucky Fortune Cookery's menu. Now, it was always one of my favorite places to come eat with my family, simply because it had a lot of Chinese offerings and we do love Chinese food. Of course, it's got a menu switch now to Japanese food, and I find that it's a great improvement. I appreciate the udon and the chicken that they have here now much more than the teriyaki or Szechuan chicken. And additionally, the Baymax macaron is a nice addition to their menu. I love it personally. Wine Country Trattoria was lowered to number three on my list for much the same reason that Carthay was. It just received a smaller drop. I still think that Wine Country Trattoria is one of the better places to eat at DCA, but I primarily ranked it number one last year because it was an affordable table service restaurant with an easy to get reservation. It is just pretty standard Italian restaurant style food, however, but the flavor was there for me when I ate here and I still think it's deserving of the top three. The second best restaurant at Disney California Adventure is Lamplight Lounge, but it is the top dog as far as table service restaurants go, as is evident by how popular it is and the near to non-existent reservations that are available. If you do not grab this within a couple of days of the 60 day window opening up, you probably won't be able to get a reservation very easily. Of course, they do have a walk up window available. The lobster nachos here are phenomenal, as are all of the drinks that I have tried. 
However, on my most recent visit, the potato skins just kind of fell a little short for me, which is why this is not my number one overall, uh, but it's still an excellent place to eat at DCA. And the best restaurant to eat at in Disney California Adventure, in my opinion, is Pim Test Kitchen. This is my go-to when I'm in the park. This is the place I feel like that I eat at the most often, that has the best food, the best menu, and I mean, everything literally that they sell I have enjoyed. Even the breakfast offerings are great here. I am a bit bummed that they got rid of the Choco Smash bar. However, I did try the Choco Smash cake, which was the replacement. Tried it just this morning, and I did find it to be a decent replacement. It's not quite as shareable, but the cake portion in the center actually isn't as dense or as sweet as the rest of the cake, and I found it to be the best part of the dessert. And that's it for our time here today at DCA, ranking every single restaurant from worst to best. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you agree or disagree with me, just go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. I'm always happy to engage with you. If you missed my Disneyland ranking video, click it right here to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.